Here on this central Australian cattle station, there's a plague ravaging the land. Evidence of this menace is everywhere. And these pastoralists are on a mission to keep the invaders at bay. We estimate that there are uh, about a million camels out there and uh, we know the population is still increasing. It's doubling about every nine years. Over the last few years they've become basically plague proportions in the whole Central Australia region. These animals now roam more than three million square kilometres of land across South Australia, Western Australia, the Northern Territory and Queensland. Camels are certainly unwelcome guests here on Curtin Springs Station, a million acre property just down the road from Uluru. Over the last 20 years I suppose it's gone from you, you shoot the odd camel to now we're shooting on an average well over a thousand a year. Any camel I see is dead. Ashley Severin runs about 4,000 cattle in this desolate land. It's tough country to work, water for the cattle is pumped from underground and the camels are unwanted rivals for scarce vegetation. The camels compete with the grass, with, with, with the feed for the cattle. So it, it is a, a one hell of a problem for it. The camels completely destroyed the fence here at Rocky's Dam. So the water in this dam has proven irresistible to the ever thirsty camels and the station owners have been forced to build a fortress-like fence to keep them out. This cable's just over six mil and has a three ton breaking strain to compensate for the strength of the animal because they're just so strong. Most fences on this station are nowhere near that strong and the camels walk straight through the wire, sometimes dragging the fences hundreds of metres out of alignment. The station has spent $120,000 on fence repairs in the past year alone. They just totally annihilate them. They just pull the fences completely out of the ground. But Aboriginal communities are also struggling to coexist with the enormous camel herd. Docker River lies on the Northern Territory border with Western Australia, where the desert has among the highest camel densities in the country. Animals like this constantly invade the township in search of water. Camels have actually uh, managed to either turn on taps or knock uh, taps uh, off, uh, off uh, the sides of buildings in order to uh, get access to the town water. At times there can be up to three to four hundred camels just walking into town. It's quite surreal to see it. We had a big mob of camel and they wrecked my fence. This couple's fence was torn down when hundreds of thirsty camels rampaged through the community at the height of the drought. Oh, we had a big mob of camel in trying to get some more out of, out of my little tap and knock, all, knock my fence down. I saw a lot of camel in my yard. And I was very frightened they might go in and break into my house. This may look like a piece of modern art, but it's actually a novel construction designed to stop nightly blackouts caused by camels bringing down the power lines. We actually got the, the old bombs out and put them around the pole to, to try to stop the camels from knocking down the poles. Oh yeah, there's too many camels in this community. We need to stop all them camels coming in. Lyle Kenny exemplifies the love-hate yeah. relationship this community has with camels. He recognises the damage being done by the pests, but also has a soft spot for them. He adopted Lassiter after finding the baby abandoned by its herd. Now the animal's grown, Lyle Kenny's not quite sure what to do with him. I took him out last week trying to throw them a camel. I left him there, but he came back that night, came back to the house. The damage to property is so great here that the McDonnell Shire Council has applied for a four and a half million dollar federal infrastructure grant to camel proof communities like Docker River. Boundary fencing, 
some uh, cattle grids on major access points in and out of the communities. But scientists are warning fencing is just one part of a much bigger effort that's urgently needed, or else the country's camel problem may never be brought under control. The problem is going to get a lot worse. And in fact, it may get beyond us in terms of uh, our ability to be able to manage it effectively. An alliance of community groups, Aboriginal organisations and government agencies in Central Australia has devised a $50 million cross-border plan to cull camels on a massive scale. They're now waiting to see how much the Commonwealth and others are willing to contribute. Time is of the essence. We need to remove, um, over the next eight years, in the order uh, of a million camels out of the system. And uh, to do that, uh, effectively, I think uh, aerial culling will play a big role. Many believe there's potential for stations like Curtin Springs to run camels as a commercial meat operation, but only after the size of the herd is slashed. And for these pastoralists, that can't happen soon enough. Exterminate them, bring them back to a manageable number, put them behind wire, and then you can start again. The problem is now to a point, you've got to stop talking about it, you've got to start doing something.